Hello! Pardon me. Welcome back to uh, me reading more Snowbound Blood. Uh, I said in the last video I was going to do the next one the day before after that, but I didn't. Because I got distracted, some family stuff happened. And yeah. Anyway, enough, enough of that. You don't want to hear that. Who cares? What you want to hear oh, is me reading like a dumbass. We are going to move on to the volume, f <laughs> volume four of Stagecraft and Survival. This is an okay volume. No time to think. No time to breathe. Your name is Cecily Iropara, and you are busy. <laughs> and that's it. So we, for this volume, we have Indari Veneer and Orica Rouse. Rouse. Roust. Roust. I don't know. Um, uh, if you recall, at the end of um. Husky's volume, it said Oracle Roust is in danger, and I think uh, our, our Olive Blood Caller gave us a photo of her, I think. But we're not going to find out until after I do it in Diary, because we do left to right. <laughs> yeah, if you're wondering, these, um, the volumes aren't necessarily in chronological order. Well, for, for the most part, they are, but between the first and the second, like, I don't know, this one, like, this one could either happen after Orica or before Husky's. If that makes sense. You were done with operating solely on assumptions after your last dead end. Still, you know you can you know the importance of digging into any lead you can get, especially now. Said lead may stem from moronic claim given to you by a less moronic than you had hoped individual. <laughs> but you had a feeling that Endari Veneer may be able to provide you with useful information. From the metaphorical waste basin of former dead ends, your very own boulevard of broken leads, <laughs> you feel a promising case start to emerge. One potential connection in particular lingers in the back of your mind. As much as you initially thought you initially thought it unlikely, you're beginning to realise that the subject of cultist activity has been too conveniently linked to your search path thus far. Your path correspondent certainly seemed to have a lot to say about it. But your your what correspondent? Your mysterious correspondent. Sorry, where did pa where did I get path from? The relevance of their confounding cogitations are questionable at best. It all sounds like nothing more than the same vacuous nonsense that usually comes to your correspondence tango. Still, surely the stage that's been set for your song and dance must have some relevance of its own. As much as you can justify from your close encounters of the corn cult kind, at any rate. Oh, that was pretty good. You're getting better at this monologuing thing, you think. Too bad there's not some sort of unseen audience that's privy to your innermost thoughts. Back to the matter at hand. It's still a hunch, but it's one with far more backing than your last. And, at this point, not an idea you can really afford to disregard. You make up your mind. It's high time you found some new avenues of possibility. And we're back here. It doesn't take you long to pinpoint your next mark's location. The invasive advertising littering the streets provides you with the information you need before you can ever wonder where to come across it. Also, you're just in time to make it to the end of an ongoing show at Stronghold 21's largest theatre. It's not all that far, either. The building itself is an architectural standout, considering it's one of the oldest structures in this part of the stronghold. Its distinctive aesthetic makes the theatre entrance an effortless find, which, really, you're thankful for. You've been through enough toilsome rat mazes in recent memory. Haha. <laughs> of course, you're also without any sort of invitation of purchased tickets to this event. Not that such a dilemma has ever stopped you before. It certainly isn't going to start now. It's all in the way you carry yourself. A simple display of persuasion here, a little flash of authority there at the entrance, and you're all set. Easy. You waste no time in moving swiftly across the theatre's lobby, straight toward the padded doors at the opposite end of the room. The questioning glances you receive along the way are dutifully ignored. From this side, you can hear the thrum of the speakers projecting a single voice on stage. Occasional hoots, haws, and sounds of endearment emanate from what you estimate is a rather large audience. Sounds like a busy show, not the kind you're very partial to, but you never intended on sticking around to watch anyway. You crack the door open. Ooh. Uh, hold on. Pardon me. Oh. It's a dark, massive room. The only sources of illumination are the various flashing effects and lights coming off the side of the stage. Few observers seated at the back cast an annoying glance in your direction, as the sage lights are momentarily dulled by your intrusive presence in the lit doorway. You have more important things to concern yourself with than the fleeting emotions of complete strangers. They'll live, you think, before slipping inside and letting the door shut behind you. I wish I had that same thought process, Cecily. You take, the, you take a moment to map out the room, charting the out open spaces for the best path through. Then you direct your gaze towards what's holding everyone's attention. Hello, my guy. Yeah. This con really confused me at first. Endari is ma a man. 
just uh just got long hair. <laughs> like me. Your target is on the stage up ahead. Oh, I like this theme. This theme's cool. It's different than all the others, definitely. Being with exuberant energy as he flits about this be a beautiful, be beautifully decorated stage in a series of graceful steps. Oh. oh. <laughs> I went accidentally. Ugh. It's been a fluid, smooth, skillful dance to accompany his act, a grandiose display of charisma. The audience is growing progressively more anxious, it seems. A sense of anti anticipation in the air, as what you can only assume to be sort of grand finale is built up. You really did arrive with perfect timing. You may be able to get through this investigation in a timely fashion if you manage to catch him fast enough. Recall, Andari Veneer. Heck, hey, and a secret Andari is an anagram for Eridan. <laughs> Even before you got your ref refer referral, refer 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 referral from Bitcoin, you could have easily called his face to mind, what with it being plastered on all manner of public advertisements and news feeds. Being quite the acclaimed illusionary performer and well-known celebrity across the mass, and Dari Veneer's rising star makes for no small target. I've actually got a, a troll OC who's quite like Ndari. He first started to pop up on the public radar as a small street performer, doing little magic tricks and celestial readings for anyone that came by. Eventually he gained enough recognition that some big leading hotshots all fit to give him an opportunity on the stage, which turned out to be a huge success and further skyrocketed, skyrocketed his popularity. Alright, is the volume a bit high a bit? Now he spends a majority of his time putting on large-scale shows for the massive audiences, travelling all around the continent and accruing even more attention from the masses. What's more noteworthy to you, though, are the hushed whispers of what came before his rise to fame. There's quite a pervasive rumour that surfaces from time to time, detailing a past supposedly rifled with cultist activity, which is consistently avoided addressing when mentioned. Uh oh. Perhaps he has something worth hiding. If there's any validity to this gossip in the slightest, you'd like to see what exactly lies behind it for yourself. Get in position. Move away from the door, still keeping close to the back wall and slipping into the shadows. It's best not to draw more, more attention to yourself than necessary, make sure you're not going to make a single sound while Lindari is still up on the stage. You have plenty of talents to offer the world, but this is not your preferred method of display. The logical course of action would be to sneak into the backstage area and catch him there, preferably, preferably without an, audience of, uh, an audience's observance. Uh, pardon me. I've not burped at all since, until today. At this point, the music in the auditorium has reached vibrant crescendo, and Ndari is poised to unveil one final trick. With an intricate motion of his hands, the show's climax is revealed. A swarm of rats rushes the stage, <laughs> seeming to appear from thin air. A horde of rodent bodies pulse, pulses and jitters across the floor in a shockingly coordinated visual display. A final triumphant break from the orchestra, resembling a tada, follows a stupefying act. Or, excuse me, a dojan. <laughs> Sorry. The audience is transfixed with the silence before erupting into a hollering frenzy. The sound is abhorrent to your easily agitated auricula auricular canal canals, a none too gentle reminder that you would really like to get away from it as quickly as possible. Now just happens to be the perfect opportunity you were waiting for. Use the uproar to slip through the note unnoticed, making your way past the crowd by sticking close to the walls. You drive through a set of doors near the stage. Backstage hall appears to be vacant. Your guess is that any personnel who would normally be back here is busy helping with either the stage production or the audience. Hmm, what's in there? I wonder. Hmm, hmm. I wonder who that room could be. I'm joking. We don't know whose room that is. I think I know whose room it is. <laughs> it's definitely not empty though. Along the length of the hallway, there's an assortment of stage props, costumes, and other typical theatrical junk haphazardly arranged against the walls. Everything is conveniently labelled, including the door you just went through. It only takes a second to spot the labelled with a stage sign, where you can expect your targets to be coming through any time now. Excellent. Or they'd be considerably more thrilled with this newfound strategic position if you weren't still dealing with all of that awful noise. Soon it would be at least somewhat quieter back here. Fortunately enough for you, it appears there's a few built-in speakers lining in the ceiling. It must be tapped directly into the stage's microphones. You can hear vocalisations of, of the show just as clearly as if you were back in the auditorium. Probably for the benefit of any stagehands and performers being back here that need to respond to cues. This auditory monitoring system will tell you exactly when the door is about to open. We're just trying to focus on that for now. Hello. Do you have time to finish a new thought before the door swings open with no, no warning? So nearly runs into you in their haste. Oh. So Indara is going to sound a bit, uh, a bit fancy, I'd say. <laughs> That's right. Indara jumps back, snarled. You can't really blame him for not being, not expecting anyone to be at the bottom of the stairs when he came through. 
pardon me, dear, I... You're not usually back here. I don't believe I've seen you before. Yeah, that's a good voice, I think. His disposition is sweet. Almost sickeningly so. Gives you an unsettling inkling that you're in for another tedious interaction. Still, there's no need to be harsh. Too harsh too soon. Oh, is this another t one of those Tumblr sexy men people keep talking about? <laughs> no. I can't say my frequent attendee no. I'm Chief Regulator Cecily E. Opara. I have a few questions for you regarding an ongoing case. I'd also like to make this as quick as possible. I'm sure you've got plenty of other things to be doing, as, as do I. <laughs> and Dari's eyes seem to light up with the prospect, completely dissolving any prior hint of wariness in his expression. Right, yes, yes. I thought you might be coming sometime, by sometime soon. It's an honour to meet you indeed. I'm happy to provide any assistance I'm capable of. I'm sure you're already aware, but for the sake of re returned formalities, my name is Indari Vanir. What would you like to know, Regulator? You might as well get the most pressing matter out of the way, even if you're not looking forward to talking about it again in any sort of detail whatsoever. Judging by Indari's attitude so far and who he's acquainted with, you're likely going to get more nonsense than you strictly prefer. First off, I would like to follow up on an alibi provided by Bitcoin Crypto. He claimed that the two of you were close. The only semblance of an explanation for his lack of involvement in the crime was that two of you and a few others were eating together at the time of the incident. As it stands, I'm not very inclined to believe such a flimsy excuse. Mm-hmm. Did he relay a ludicrous account of our outing to you as well? It's absolutely not how he described it, I assure you. The ridiculous part at least, I mean. Really, it's quite adorable to see him much more speechless than usual in certain situations. But yes, he was with me for sure, as well as our other two companions. We all had a tight knit. Very solid group, if I do say so myself. Believe me, his attention was stolen, and the man himself was wholly occupied through the entire night. And I know for a fact that if anything abnormal was indeed occurring, he would have been a bit more distracted. He wasn't involved in this ordeal. As short as he can be at times, I promise Bit is a genuine sweetheart where it counts. You have a really difficult time imagining that in any possible way. From what I understand of the situation, I don't believe it's actually something he would mess with. You're good to ask the others too if you'd like, of course. However, unless you happen to find yourself already speaking to them for a different reason, I wouldn't see it be a very, very effective use of your time. You won't argue with that claim. Most likely he's right. He's only presented with the same unavailing cover story about how much of a good group of friends they are on anything valuable. The thing said here was really proves anything one way or another, but whatever. It's still a dead end, unless you can come up with more solid evidence in the future. Also, you just do not want to talk about that guy ever again unless it's absolutely necessary. So as long as long as you can help it. You sigh. Oh, sure, I suppose that's enough about him for now. Is that what you came to inquire about, Monsieur Opara? Not exactly, no. <coughs> Pardon me. I also, received what, I also received what appears to be an old fly for some of your horoscope reading services. I was under the impression that you had mostly stopped doing those, but your history of them leads me to believe you might have some valuable insight on certain occult practices regardless. And Dari falls silent for a short moment, freezing in place with a hint of unease, almost as if you just insulted him in some way. It doesn't last though, as he quickly recollect, rec recollects himself and doubles back on his former disposition. Odd. Hmm, a flyer? What flyer do you mean? Pull some of the paper out of your, of your coat pocket, handing it over to him. He's relatively collected, but still seems rather eager to take it from you. Oh, I completely forgot I didn't pass this particular one on. You are correct, though. Unfortunately, I do not get to do these much anymore. The fire is absolutely outdated and not very relevant. I've only passed a few out of these off in the past, to specific individuals I trust. The brother gets a bit hectic over the idea, considering my position now. Most use it as a means of getting close to me, rather than actually holding any interest in the service itself. But I also simply prefer to focus on my performance work instead. Well, even if you're stopped entirely at this point, it's not... It's not been that long since you were at least somewhat involved. These sorts of practice, practices are usually found in niche worship traditions, primarily important to devout individuals. So that implies you have at least some sort of familiarity with the idea, doesn't it? Hmm. The trolls have started to come into the hallway by now. Once again, his presentation shifts slightly, showing a faint glimmer of discomfort. His, his, eyes dart, his, his, dart, his eyes dart briefly to each of his sides in turn. Does it? I don't believe interest. I don't believe interest in the subject at large, and the associated with individ ideals themselves had to come in hand in hand, strictly speaking. Space in the scope of the stars can hold an array of meanings and importance to different individuals for different reasons. That's not what I asked. Hmm. He's dodging the question. You expected this at least partially. The most, more, more, you see, the more you see of him, the more you wonder why he's exactly so secretive and avoidant of the subject. 
Being overly super suspicious is still, still not something you'd like to get into the habit of. Sometimes a little concern can provide to be useful in, in the end. Perhaps we, we should move this, con this somewhere else if we are to continue, continue this conversation here. Yes. I should first be in everyone, everyone's way. Or potentially raise sensitive information to any prying ears, intentional or otherwise. That's fine, I suppose. As long as we hurry it up. I'm not here to bounce locations a dozen times for a single conversation. Please, not again. My dressing room is likely to be the most suitable space for that, that also guarantees privacy, privacy for the rest of our chat. If that's alright with you, it's right over here, so not far at all. I think I'm speaking really little, quickly again. Nah. He pointed to the door right across from the stage entrance. You noticed it when you came in, considering its features with its features his own name plastered on a large star-shaped sign. Not too hard to find. Sure. Excellent. You watch idly as he moves around you, toward the door. He procures a key from his pocket and turns the lock, but leaves the door handle to remain firmly in place when he pushes down on it. The safe performer frowns, letting out a small huff. He riddles with the key. He fiddles with the key, making slight changes in the way he's moving the handle each time he tries again. Oh, this is... Oh, I hate... <laughs> using keys. It doesn't budge. Oh dear. My apologies, this seems to be giving me some trouble as of late. I should have put it out now of all times. He gives it a few more tries before pulling back, a discontent from frown now evident on his face. Great, just what you needed. More inane complications and delays to eat up your time. He better not be stalling on purpose. Pulling the wool over your eyes is an extremely regrettable choice from, for anyone to make. Take it to another room then. I'm sure there's somewhere else that could, that could work just fine. Well, I do have another solution. A little trick up my sleeve, you could say. Sit tight just for a moment. <laughs> he then scurries off into another room down the hall. At first you consider going after him. He may make it some sort of escape for all you know. There is only a brief moment of hesitation before you start to hear a breath of clattering sound above above, gradually moving closer to where you're standing. Is he? He's absolutely crawling through the ventilation system. This is so absurd you even feel partially inclined to give a shit, but honestly, as long as it works, you could care less about what he's doing. You could care less? That means you do care? At least a little? You follow, <laughs> you follow the sounds of his movement. It all comes to a catastrophic conclusion in the form of a loud crash and yelp coming from inside the room in front of you. That's one way to do it, you suppose. A moment later, he's opened the sparkling door, grinning wide and spreading his arms out in a bit of dramatic flair. Ta-da! All sorted. Please, come in. And Dari then steps aside, giving you an opening to come into the room. Once you're through, the performer gently shuts the door behind you. No? Hey, is that a picture of the boys I see? I mean, I see Bitcoin, I see... Oh, I see, uh... I see Glomer in one, I think. I don't know who... Yeah, I think that's it. Sorry, I'm getting out of breath. <sighs> Sorry about the mess. Things are usually at least a smidge tidier around here. Well, my room's in a tip, don't worry. The room is a little cluttered, covered in haphazardly strung about articles of clothing and boxes full of props, along with some miscellaneous personal belongings. Seems that he spends quite a bit of time in here, outside of just preparing himself for the shows. Looking too unusual for the most part, really. Except for a particular decorative piece that catches your eye. Hmm. The far corner of the room, hanging above a, a, sh a sh chaise? A chaise? A sh oh, chaise? I don't know. Of, of a lounge. Is a large, dual-pronged resonator. The kind that you're certain only belongs to a very specific and supposedly disbanded cult. Uh, if he's so keen in hiding any sort of personal cult-related history, why in the world does he have this on display? You're more than welcome to take a seat somewhere if you'd like. I'm fine as I am. I'll keep standing. Very well, not a problem. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, that tastes like the chicken strips I just had. Now, I'd appreciate it if you gave gave an answer to my proper um, proper gave my. <coughs> now, I'd appreciate it if you gave my question a proper answer. A simple yes or no would have been an acceptable start. Pardon me. Your reluctance to provide an, provide even that much does not do you any favors, as far as convincing me of your own innocence in this, this case goes. 
Well, I, yes, I can see that. I do wish to apologize for seeming rather uncooperative a moment prior. It was not the impression I wish to relay, by any means. I don't really talk about these sorts of things with strangers, but I do understand the gravity of the situation, and I'm afraid it would hold that anything that would be useful to you. Not to be out of streaming range, allow me to be more sincere. I'm listening. He straightens himself, taking a steadying breath before continuing. Let me get this out of the way. Yes, I do have... Yes, I do have prior history of some organized fanatic groups, perhaps more so than you may initially guess. However, I have left all of those practices and beliefs behind. My reference to the subject is due to personal disdain as well as precaution towards my own safety. The discomfort you displayed earlier displays earlier, now bearing a new context. So that's what a skinsler of genuine fear. You'd have, to, you'd have to tread carefully. He seems willing enough to discuss this, but it's clear a sens clearly sensitive topic. Too much prying into his past could be unwise if the interview is to remain cordial. I do not wish to burden you with excessive personal history on the subject. Find out as, provide as much detail as you see fit. Of course, most of my information is rather dated, but I do know a great deal of things concerning some specific, group, specific groups and other and their operations of the recent past. So I'll share what I can. That's a clearer answer than you were expecting. I was a bit disappointing if he really is being truthful right now. You can't help but hope for something a bit more challenging to dig into sometimes. There is still at least one more piece of evidence that needs an explanation. There's a few questions that I have left for you. Either way, perhaps you can still get something out of this. You decide to talk get him talking about horoscope relevance. I don't think this this is a pretty short route, if I remember correctly. What you'd really like is some information on the religious groups that do some sort of thing he's done before. Gauge how plausible it may be that, that some cult could be behind this. You've seen quite an array of different sects and doctrines, focused either on Caparia, Gaion, or both. Far more minuscule in scope are any practices related to the Vivifier. It's not easy to find any information on those, past vague whispers of from rumours. The uh, subject of your murglary, however, is relevant to the belief in her existence, or at least to an extent. There's no doubt that something like the filter would be tremendously valuable to those that have, have faith in its properties. That's not a new conclusion. But, as you said, these sorts of things tend to be a bit difficult to trace. You don't know how much about their value, value's capabilities. They cover their tracks well. You need a better profile. A good enough place to start, you suppose, would be to better understand something you've already been talking about. I think I've actually been reading quite better in this route than the other ones. But, uh, uh, that won't help for the longer volumes, though. Uh. Celestial reading is something that was supposedly practiced by the Vivifier, isn't it? And why not many people follow that line of faith anymore? But what about your spe spe specific beliefs? Was that part of it? I think specific is a word I fucking mess up a lot for some reason. Oh, absolutely! It'd be inching closer to more personal than you'd like for for a case. It's not like you have a lot of options here. You just have to hope you can keep it as short as possible. Then what could you tell me about your former group's functioning as far as the tra 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 that tradition goes? His eyes wander down towards the floor, contemplative and unsure, filling this silent gap in conversation with the feeling you can't place, still lingering when there when he glances back at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what happens when I've just eaten and I'm, I'm I do this. I, I was going to do this later, but I was like, you know what? I might as well do it now. Although I'm, I'm obviously going to take a break after Indari and then do Orica later. Oh, I'm going to have so I'm going to have such a hard time doing Orica's voice. Considering I'm not good with high pitched female voices, and you know that's how I imagine Orica would sound. Hmm, well, horoscope reading came from an idea that Vivify herself was a prophetic and divine individual. She possessed great insight into the future, in addition to all the other ostensibly wondrous things about her. Let many other trolls seek her guidance and eventually try to imitate her in all sorts of ways. So they learned how to read the heavens in correlation to the things she taught. Oh, and... The summer mood suddenly brightens back up to a tremendous degree. That also altered perceptions of how those stars in the sky were viewed in general. She started to trend, probably categorizing constellations. The daughter, for example. It's a constellation whose identity changed throughout the Renaissance. At first, it was believed to be a certain prophecy of the Vivifier's arrival, so she did it honor her during their time of highest relevance. He's not really talking about the cult so much as he's relaying asterism tales. This sort of history lesson isn't exactly what you were looking for, but you'll continue to humor him for the moment. Later, it was also interpreted as a symbol of hope that either she or a descendant of hers would somehow return to us after she vanished. Of course, there are many other constellations and individual celestial bodies that have their own prescribed meanings. Okay, now you've heard enough. You're just going to keep blathering about stars until you intervene. Time to fix that. 
Come on, Cecily, let someone indulge for some for once. We're getting pretty off track. All right, sorry. You seem fairly enthusiastic about all this for someone who claims to not know, follow the same principles anymore. There's clearly some connection still being harboured here. It's not you no longer do any readings yourself in the present. Are you really lying to me, Mr. Veneer? No, absolutely not. I don't, I don't do them anymore at all. But the same context is definitely not a service to anyone at least. Any interest I now have in the subject comes entirely from a perspective, a fascination, for cultural history and analysis of its sociological relevance. The stars really sociological relevant? I don't know. That and I certainly adore studying the stars as they are. I don't, I don't want to do any readings the way I did them before. It is a bit of an initiative thing in and of itself, don't you think? Don't you tell someone what they're predisposed to be, or how they, they should behave at any given time or expectation of a sacred, predetermined outcome? Well, that's religion for you. The concept of fate in any form does not exactly leave much room for freedom and personal growth, I'd say. Of course, I tended to use it as a means of positive encouragement to anyone who came to me. This doesn't change the fact that I was proclaiming undue authority and providing deceitful, unrealistic promises to complete strangers. I don't want to do something like that to anyone ever again, even with good intentions in mind. Well, there you have it. It's one of the reasons you dislike those particular kinds of bogus ideas. And too many people willing to exploit others. You can't really bring yourself to disagree with the last sentiment entirely, though. Despite any th philosophical differences you may have had with Endari. Was it intentional manipulation for the sake of authoritative gain in the case of your sect? Without a doubt. After I actually paid attention to it, it was very obvious. They're using their own interpretation of certain texts to spread lies, and indoctrinated me to do the same. Oh wow, we're really getting commentary on religion here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Anything in existence, especially something as mystical and awe-inspiring as the stars, can be given a meaning as to per perpetuate an agenda. Perhaps not all groups follow those beliefs and tend to use the f follow those beliefs and tend to use them for harm, but it certainly does happen. And it happened to me. But it definitely marks quite a large number of boxes on your mental checklist for extremely shady cult behaviour. Doesn't really tell you anything pertinent to the case, but where did smaller things have become important before? Okay, so like a lot of this stuff doesn't isn't necessarily relevant to like, the case at hand, but it is like world building for Repton and Vastera and all that, which I, I think I probably said in a, in like volume three. Oh. Oh. Bring out a breath. That item in the wall is not something that you can ignore. Oh yeah, the, what was it? Decorative Resonator. It's the only thing you have limited knowledge on, but it still concerns you. What you do know is that it's an incredibly rare object we've seen anywhere, especially under the ownership of someone who claims to lack any sort of religious practice. The small court loses particular item in rituals, but extremely focused on balance as a core principle. They vanished without a trace some time ago, though it's anyone's guess as to why. Maybe they're just hiding. <sighs> give, me, give me a minute. Let me catch my breath. I noticed the resonator on display in the corner. I don't think you know anything about their use, but I, know, I do know where, they, where it comes from. What's the purpose of keeping it there? Dara most momentarily turns his head away from you to look away from the object and look at the object in question. He was unaware of it being there in the first place. Oh, that? I thought I found it interesting to observe, for one, in the sense that I just think it's neat. <laughs> the actual use of it, however, is not something I, or anyone else for that matter, really dabble in anymore. What use would that have been, precisely? You'll be delighted to know I have just the answer. Well, they're used in a variety of prayer rituals. The main concept behind them was that the, the dual prongs were represented balance between the, both the All Mother and the Nord Father, and everything that they both embody. In the ritual, a member of the congregation would continually strike the resonator to generate a continuously emitted frequency. That sounds a bit... is that like Scientology? No, that Scientology is definitely something sound related, I think, if I recall correctly. I don't remember. This frequency was believed to bridge the gap between our physical and ethereal dimensions, allowing direct contact with the divine. The sound itself is quite pleasant at first. This gets stale fairly quickly if you're not into it, though. Most who are using it happen to be extremely invested in the whole thing, so... It shows delicately before continuing. The process could go on for many hours at a time. An enchanting concept in theory. It does one that I personally find to be extremely terrifying in application. I get... I get Okay, there's a certain Vastera character that reminded me of. I don't know if that's relevant or not. I think someone might know what I'm talking about. I think. I don't know. And we'll be seeing him soon enough, I think. 
Because this scent has such a frequency, it would become very annoying very quickly. We are not sure how exactly it would lead him to call it terrifying. Or perhaps you could somewhat relate. If it produces an effect in any way similar to that one disquieting that to that one disquieting experience you've had recently. You suppress a shudder. Something tells you this context is much more sinister than all the news these instant instant feels. Elaborate. Hmm. He pauses, frowning, crossing his arms in front of himself, as if to create a weak line of defence against the question. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I can taste the chicken in that one. <coughs> Sorry. I'm a bit gross. The visuals themselves were meditative. Everything surrounding it needed to be calm and quiet. That part was fine. What were these when the thing started actually happening? I missed the ringing. You'd eventually be able to hear what sounds like whispers. You see, unintentional, but on occasion, clear, clearer things would come through. Like any sort of speaker present. Of course, it didn't all amount to just that. Wow, my head's starting to feel, like, really heavy. Okay, maybe it's from the other day. I ran away from home the other day. Don't ask. But, yeah, I went on a really, like, two-hour long walk near my old house, and I just... I was so tired after that, and I felt really heavy. I was starting to feel heavy again now. Like, oh, my... My, oh, my head is all going around slow. <laughs> Alternation, changes in the feeling of the room. Your body eventually goes numb and all you see is black, white and grey, dancing in your void. Okay, that might definitely be relevant. The noise keeps getting louder. It's paranormal activity, I'm sure of it. It felt rather like some sort of possession. Which I'm not a fan of in any way. It made me extremely uncomfortable and there's a huge reason as to why I didn't stick around in their midst for very long. Sources of any kind are a curious topic in general, aren't they? I don't have I don't want anything to do with that on a personal level, but I mean they are rather interesting to think about, I suppose. The thought of an anomaly breaching our material reality and the subjectivity of how it may be perceived by different individuals provides a lot to talk about. For example, he's going off on a tangent again. Talking about distortions and glitches in the Matrix was not the point of this. He's starting to wish you would to start distort into some kind of two-dimensional figure so you could step away from this conversation. Alright, that's enough of that. If you just like what the resonator does so much, why did you still keep it? Not just around, but also hung up in display for like a prized possession for that matter. The sake of reminding myself why I left in the first place. Maybe I, should, maybe I should get rid of it. It's probably not the best thing to hold on to. But for now, something I can look back on if I ever doubt my decisions at any point. It's a connection. A pulsing reminder of where I came from and where I actually do not want to return to. I see it there sometimes, and it brings to mind how distressing and awful it really, all really was. While those were interesting and engaging stories, obviously expended on some important lore, you're still not certain they'll actually help you locate your thief. The cult launch doesn't give you anything too direct to look into now, being primarily about a group that's really disappeared sleeps ago. You've done a lot of interesting listening to random garbage, enough not, slu uh, not enough sleuthing. What's your displeasure? Once again, you just have to remind yourself that sometimes that's just what this job requires. Online, there's still one other thing you have to ask. We decided to get him talking about the cult now. Yeah. This particular religious sect I'm hearing about, you've been referring to the same group this entire time, haven't you? That's... um... yes, I have. From what I understand, not only were they extremely reclusive, but also stopped being seen altogether about two years ago. There was never a documented name, but anyone who no heard anything about their activities had taken and called them by a specific, specific moniker. You were a part of the Mora. He nods silently. What happened to them? I don't know, truthfully. I was already out from very far away from the va when they vanished, before they vanished. Granted, I was trying to keep my distance, but I still knew of some things that were going on. Someone I just didn't. And neither did anyone else, it seems. Oh, that's just fantastic. And here about hoping you can get at least get a clue as to where this bunch could be tucked away if anywhere. I'll admit that does it just I'll admit that does worry me too. My mind jumps to horrible scenarios, and I don't like this, the idea that something bad could be happening to anyone. Could have happened to anyone, regardless of what I think of them. That's a definite possibility, especially if they weren't a particularly large congregation. Do you still actually believe they are truly gone? No, I do not. <coughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. There's another, there's another question for you. Whether it's the Moor or any other kind of pious syndicate, how far do you think they would go to obtain an artificial substance? Subst an artifact substantial enough to claim the promise of eternal life. I think you said that to almost anyone, faithful or otherwise, it feels similarly. Indisputably, many want just do this about anything to get their hands on it. 
That's quite a colossal concept. Who would at least be curious in some fashion? Pardon me. I mean, at least I'm not hiccuping like last fall you. Clearly, the state of wellness in whether eternal life would be positive or negative things is an entirely different discussion, but anything that gives hope of correcting the horrible problems that this planet has, people are going to flock to it, even more so than when, than when faith in the divine comet comes to play. Like, you know, the less suns both dying at an incredibly rapid rate. Here we go again. Yes, I understand the point you're trying to make. You do not need to finish it. That ends your look of embarrassment with him bashfully putting a hand on his mouth as if to stop himself from speaking on it further. Are there any other groups you'd like to bring to light? I could use something potential traceable at the very least. The Meth Maniacs, which I'm sure you've heard plenty about, but I don't think that's very useful though. Not exactly the kind that seeks any form of life preservation. Yeah, probably not. That's a pretty deep, sizable cliff to die from. That's where I started. The grass was even harder to shake off, for obvious reasons. I wouldn't be able to do it without a little help. I think her name started with a T. Our conversation was brief, but she looked just about as trapped as I was. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Oh, so I should have known better than to stop there. But I was still incredibly young and still desperate to find a community for myself and something that still felt familiar. You know, that's actually pretty common. That you know, that's a that's a lot of reason. Like, a lot of the lower class will go to like cults or no, not not cults, like like religious groups or sects. Okay, something I need to point out: sex and cults are different things. Sect, like, okay, a cult is not what the media calls it. A cult is like, uh, like, a, okay, a cult is like a little group of people that like do a paid service, like a yoga class. That's a cult. Like, a sect is more like you know, what were they called? Like, Jonestown, I think it was. That's a, that's a sect, or like, you know, Scientology. That is basic. They're pretty much a cult. And this is actually like doing like some pretty good, you know, commentary on that. I think maybe I'm just saying it because I'm a sociology student and I just like <laughs> pretending that I'm smart, but I don't know. <laughs> I thought sitting away from one faith to another was with the program's ideals would just be what I needed, but I was wrong. As it turns out, most religious organizations are rather alike in the end. The trolls I've encountered that tend to rely on too heavily on faith usually turn sour from it somehow. It would seem that way, yes. Growing increasingly impatient with the extraneous musings coming from the talkative characters, he seems to have a knack for attracting. You wish you could sympathize more, but right now you have a little time for the little life stories, folk tales, and other tangents that your suspect has regurgitated. Your desire to entertain his personal rambling is only as strong as the light usefulness this information has to your case. It seems the total amount of substance you expected from this conversation has reached its limit, and you have reached yours as well. I think I've heard enough for the time being. Are you all done with me, then? I'm going to de derail you too terribly. I don't believe I can have anything else that would warrant further discussion. I can't say for sure if it's been the most productive chat, but it was amiable. So yes, I'm finished. Don't worry, I'll see myself up. Oh, um, I'm, I might be going to university later. If I'm doing accommodations, I could probably, like, I'll probably maybe read Vastera. Like, probably, I could do that every day if I do that, but I'm not really sure. So the un uni I'm going to is, like, not too far from where I live. Thank you for your time, Mr. Veneer. Of course. I wish you only the best of luck in your case, Regulator. And obviously, if there's anything else I can do to help, I'm as open and present as the nine times sky. And Dora nods, but he looks just about ready to follow you out despite your previous statement. You express a sigh, not only with what you hope is a sense of finality. This episode hasn't been done for an air of finality to it. <laughs> then you open the door without another word and step into the hallway. Hmm. I just quieted down considerably by now. There's only a couple of trolls or so popping in the outdoor, the out of the, in in and out of the other doors, and they move things around to finish their clean, cleaning dutifully. dutifully. And Derek comes to the hallway behind you. He says that decided to actually send you off. He simply wishes to move on as well. Either you don't need to stick around here any longer. Just as you're about to go on your way, you catch something out of the corner of your eye. An individual at the end of the hall that strikes you as odd. A troll wearing a dress composed of various patches of various colours, reminiscent of a panel of stained glass in watching you. She's completely still, peeking around to turn in the hall with very sharp focus. The way she's looking at you suggests more than a simple curiosity of your recent re-emerging. The moment she notices, you're you, you, she notices you've seen her, she immediately disappears back from around the corner in a flash of colour. Don't seem to notice the two, and a small gasp escapes from the motion. Wait, what? This... This time you don't express your instincts and pursue a mark. You swiftly, 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 
You swift, I should, you swiftly unsheath Frosapina and bolt down the hall after her. You're not in the mood for playing around with sketchy shit like that. You lost sight of her. As you make your way around the corner, you see the latch of the door handles ahead clicking back to a close. It's the obvious exit leading outside of the theatre entirely. You rush forward, pushing through the, pushing through them and emerging back onto the streets of Stronghold 21. Your eyes scan the area as you move, searching for that same flash of colour to the chase after, looking from where to turn next. <laughs> I know who this is. <laughs> you find nothing, even as you explore the closest possible options for her to escape through. The spying stranger is gone. With them t of a rotation, you return your blade to its proper resting place. But now Andari has come out into the streets as well, shocked and quite curious about the sequence of events. Has he just been enough for reason of his own to be concerned by it? The frustration of yet another important lead, slipping right through... The f your fingers so suddenly is evident. You're growing exceptionally tired of these moments, leaving you falling short. Though while you may have missed your chance to interrogate a potential spy, you're now absolutely certain of one more thing. You're being more closely and consistently monitored than you thought. And that is the end of Indari's route. Well, that's not the end, ladies and gents. We have Orica. The one we've wanted to get to, and what I've wanted to get to for a while, but... Unfortunately for you, I am taking a break. Oh, okay, for a second I thought I didn't even record yet, so I shall be back in like half an hour, maybe. Okay, I'm back. I don't think it's even... It's probably not even been half an hour. I'm going to say like 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, made me a brew. Alright, let's go! Orca Roust is in danger. As a conclusion you came to, standing in a cornfield and staring her f photograph in the blurry face. You didn't even think about it. Next time you're on your bike and gunning out of there. Okay, so I'm guessing this one will take place directly after Husky's route. I'm already... I need to burp again. It's not coming out. Come on! It's not coming out! Oh. Pardon me. That wasn't even a burp. It sounded like a bubble. The fact of her peril was so obvious that it'd be insulting if anyone paused long enough to explain it. Sometimes narrative introspection is just too big a strain on your schedule. <laughs> oh. You look at this place, what a fucking garbage heap. You threw all caution to the wind. Racing at top speed to get there. Get here. Around making your way down to the shoreline, you've had to ask the wind for your caution back. Not only did this close to the depths. Uh, yeah, it's going to explain this. Nobody lives on the coast without good reason. Repiton's hostile terrain is still nothing compared to the Icarus, obsidian-tinted, eldritch-infested nightmare fuel that is the seascape. The notion of a holiday doesn't really exist in your culture, and the notion of a beach holiday exists even less. The idea that anyone would ever come to such a place of relaxation is unfathomable. Equally unfathomable are the depths themselves, since nobody knows how deep they go. It may as well be bottomless. A powerful smell, which got steadily stronger as you drove towards the coast, is now threatening to overwhelm you. Your acid tubes aren't so much he heaving as they are writhing in agony. It's basically the most disgusting thing you've ever smelled in your life. Think rotting flesh, and then dial that up to rotting everything. That's what your honk sniffer is dealing with right now. It's like if someone directed an open sewer into a landfill site, which happens to be built next to the world-encompassing mass extinction, extinction zone. It's like that, because that's literally what this place is. You hate he coming here, but you have no choice. Oh, I turned the volume up again, because I was listening to some stuff earlier. As you make your way through the trash dunes, pi piled high with junk and worthless garbage, you can't help but remind us something, or rather, someone. Maybe it's just the way your insides are currently suing for emotional damages, but something about wading through a literal shit show of cultural detritus and filth brings her to mind. What would she say if she could see you now? The very thought of her gloating over you for this malodorous misadventure makes you grind your crunch stumps into oblivion. It's not like she's above any of this, though. Hell, she probably delivered some of this stuff personally. It's pretty she didn't throw herself on the pile for good measure. Ah, oh, okay. I thought they were talking about Alina for a second, but no, she's talking about yeah, um, someone. Someone else. You leave this train of thought hastily on some of the trash heap that inspired it. You've got to stop getting distracted. Didn't you mention you're in kind of a hurry at the moment? Heading for a system of caves carved out of the pr 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 promontory in the distance. That's where Orica lives. When she first really located her, she said that the bluff reminded her of a lot of a deadly departed Lucis. You never understood what the hell she was talking about. It's just a funny looking rock to you. Okay. 
Getting there is proving to be a bit of an ordeal. Having to weave to and fro through mounds of electrical junk, pre renaissance rubbish, and prem prematurely obs obs obsolescent mo modern gadgetry mixing together in one big incestuous techno slurry. Oh, I know where you got that from. As you trick through it all, your ears aren't having as hard a time as your nose. Nothing more to hear except the lapping of waves over on the shore. It's oddly soothing, if a little sinister. We are triumphantly cresting a mountain of turning Kai Kai branded interactive sing-along DVDs, far too big to walk around, and when your sensitive ears perk up a little. Sorry in the distance, only for a brief moment, you could have sworn you heard something else moving out there. Whatever, it's nothing important. Sweet beast nest buried underneath a mound of rubbish is the least of your concerns right now, and going by the noise, it's definitely not big enough to be in person. Nevertheless, you move a little bit more quietly as you finally approach the cape. The rock here seems to be eroded away over the millions of sweeps by hundreds of thousands of Repetonian sea storms. The icky black sand wends its way over inside the cave system, pressing under rows of jagged stalactites. If it did look any, like any kind of animal, which to be clear, it absolutely does not, then you'd be making your way into its mouth. Now for the cave, you mean. You know what? Forget it. <laughs> you hurry inside. The interior of the cave is damp, dark, and unwelcoming. It's actually quite hard to see anything much in here, even so close to the exit. The jet black depths water doesn't reflect much light inside. At least the smell is a bit more tolerable, though. If you walk away past a dead aquatic fauna on... Back, back to a dead aquatic fauna on your personal scale of olfactory displeasure. Hopefully that means you can breathe a little easier for a while in here. But only literally, mind you. You've still got a former client to save. Begin to move deeper into the cavern, towards where Orica's hive should be. It's very, it's, it really is very dark in here though. Could soon advise torch settings and, and, okay, no torch then. Darn, this thing was working fine earlier too. Oh wait, no, that's not quite right. There was that weird glitch that happened in Husky's barn, wasn't there? At least you think it was a glitch. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, I don't think we saw the uh, insight increment in the last of all uh, route. <sighs> You take the visor off so you can get, give it a shake or something. These things still have data cartridges that you can blow into. Ugh, it's impossible to see anything in here. Oh well, at least... Click. Uh oh. Uh oh. Lots of things are happening all at once. The light in the caverns come on out of nowhere, and they're blinding you. The low rumble starts up and the floor of the cave begin vibrating. Over the top of that low ba base, a klaxon shrieks and wails, so loud that your auricular sponge clots it... clots... Auricular sponge clots sear in pain. Behind that, you hear the telltale sound of weaponry being engaged. Oh, all well, motherfucker. <laughs> you dive wildly for cover. Heading for a large boulder, you can barely see at the edge of your peripheral vision. When I should duck just in time for a searing ball of energy streaks through the air above you. You knew it, you knew it, you knew it! They've come for her just like you suspected. You still walk straight into the trap like they left for you, like an idiot. You dodge two more laser beams in quick succession as you quite, you slightly curse yourself over and over, running into the cave wall as fast as your legs will carry you. Some movement there throws your balance though, and you desperately fumble over the few moments with the visor in your hands before losing your grip on it altogether. Shit! Your head, your head whips around you as a hurry on, and you barely manage to spot it as it tumbles through the air. Oh no. It bounces down the cavern in a shorter distance. Oh no no no. There's something inspiritive looking divot in the floor. Boom. Oh shit. Small like fireball engulfs the middle of the cavern, narrowly missing you. The noise is deafening. The heat from the explosion flares angrily against your skin. The only chance you can get rid of your sideburns, if you still had them, they certainly wouldn't be there anymore. Shit. As the landmine went off, the explosion slammed you full force into the boulder you've been aiming for. Overcome with the noise and light and heat, your vision begins to swim a little. And everything is dark again. Great work, Eopara. You blacked out. It occurs to you that... Hmm... Surely anything should be occurring to you if you've been knocked out, right? Oh well, whatever. Your mind, deep in the throes of whatever dubious state of consciousness this is, can't help but think of someone. Someone important. Someone you were trying to help. Who wants it again? Oh. Something messing with recalibration re earlier. Remembering is likely the safest option. It's possible this distinction makes absolutely no sense, but you don't give a shit about that. Now, who is it you came to see? Oh, Om Omicron? Hmm, that can't be it. Oh, Rissa? No, 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 that's not right. Come on, this is important. Your memory's supposed to be perfect, damn it. Or Orifice? Definitely not. This is a nightmare. You have to remember. You have to. You can't forget anything. Not now. You can feel it. On the right of your... To be your... 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 Your...
Oh, so maybe if Oracle leaps out of the blackness and smacks you around the face hard. Ouch. You suppose that's what you get for letting her slip through her mind, though. Oracle Rouse was one of the strangest assignments you ever had. Well, one of the one occupying you presently. Honestly, there's a bit much to get into right now. It's got a long story short. Sleeps go, she ended up in big trouble, and you were asked to bail her out of it. But not money kind of bail, more the chucking pails of water out of a sinking ship kind. You know what? Since neither legal systems nor boats are really things your culture does, it's really weird to see that bailing someone out is an expression in your language at all. It really makes you think. Alright, you're supposed to be thinking about Orica. Ugh, your head. The lack of a comma after the ugh really annoys me. She's always been somewhat of a mechanical genius. The problem with genius is that every so often it can make you do something very, very stupid. Anyway, she was a high blood in peril, and the, what was interested in arguing with both you and your sword, so you got her off the hook eventually. Not without some complications. Medical ones. When she recovered from the ordeal, Orica built you an electronic visor as a thank you for your assistance. The one that, no, you can't deal with the, you can't deal with that thought right now, it's too much. She was rehoused in this cave in secret, far away from any anyone that might try to hurt her again. That was the plan anyway. The anonymous tip had you doubting everything. You understood the danger the moment you saw the photo. Because if she's been found, then who knows what could happen? Who knows what is what is happening to her right now? You've got to help her now. Mercury leans in again and smacks her around the face again? Fucking ow. Anyway, this isn't a then you realise this isn't a, a memory of Orica that you're seeing at all. It hits a little too hard for that. You fall back up to the, the awareness slowly. The vision returns first. Then the pain starts to blossom from your think pen. And then you begin to hear again. C Cecily? <laughs> Flushed? <laughs> uh, okay. This is going to be a pain. I'm not good at doing female voices unless it's like Cecily or Hamifi. Or... Mm, Siraj wasn't... Siraj's voice that I did wasn't great. Mm. Oh. This is going to be a nightmare. My battery's something lying around already. Tell you what, my last laptop charger started fucking breaking, and this one's already on its way out. I don't know why. You're spread out on the floor of the cave where you got knocked out. Orica is still standing over you. Look, is standing over you, looking. Well, you can't tell. You can't see a face with a screen and a helmet. So what you see is some peculiar looking pictogram. It means nothing to you. You blink up at Orica in a daze. Orica, what are you doing here? Hmm, thinking. At the moment, thinking, thinking. And yeah, she just, it is, yeah, she just say these, she says these uh, out loud. She, her, 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 her whole thing is discord emotes. I'm puzzling up what you're doing, spread eagle behind a boulder, Glenn Snuggets. Thinking. OMG, Glenn Snuggets. Could it be that you came to visit me? Flushed. I suppose you could say that. Of course you were here to see her. Can't think of any other conceivable reason why anyone would, would be seen dead in this place. Hell, you very, near, very nearly were seen dead in this place. Oracle doesn't seem to pick up, up on it at this point, because it made... Ugh, pardon me. Because it was made silently in, in your head, which incidentally hurts like a bitch. It's actually claps her hands together in apparent glee. Oh, I knew it! Flushed. It's so good to see you, Cecily! Or should I say, thinking? Cecily! Lamel! Cry at me. <laughs> oh, me and my brother had a fucking hell of a time with these, with Orica, in when we read this. That's, you just said my name the same way twice. What were you thinking, walking in here without letting me know beforehand, cold sweat? It's like I was already on my way home to disarm my defense systems in the first place. Why would have made a sizzling hot Cecily stick out of you, if you know what I mean, flushed. But for real, sis, why didn't you tell you were coming? It's been so long since you came to see me, pensive. I... Orca, what is going on here? I thought you were in danger. I've said off that if someone had managed to find out where you would have lived and feared the worst. I didn't really have time to bother with a courtesy call. Well, I could have called you in the first place. I don't have a voice connection here, and I don't know how to work that ridiculous website you insist on using for communication. I can hard psyching Orica in focus. So your pants are one hell of a knockback there. It's not like she's got that bright screen and a helmet pointed right at you, flashing those weird esoteric symbols constantly as she, as she talks. Okay, well, first of all, steamed. Discorpse isn't a website, sis. 
stupid. <laughs> it's a chat client. Two completely different things, shout Paul. <laughs> Discorps. In my in my uh, adventure, I just called it Bedlam because that's a synonym for Discord. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'll do that. It's not just any old chat client, but the original, non-corporatized, independent, real-time communication engine. Steamed. One was cruelly deposed by big business interests in favor of that shitty brand of thing they just rolled out. Steamed. Oh yeah, something I never realized when I first read this. Orca's like, I think she's like thirty years old. <laughs> I was like, damn. I thought she's a bit too hip with the kids to be that old, but you know. I mean, come on! Scrub doesn't offer anything approaching the emote fun functionality Discord has. You know, it's basically worthless. I roll. Not to mention the security has loopholes out of the ass, which is a whole other kettle of Orca. Okay, maybe I'm getting a little off track here. Pensive. So, to what do I owe the pleasure of finding you all akimbo on my cave floor? Surprise, Noodle. Like well, I said before, I was. Oh, right! No, I remember you getting some shady tip that I was in danger or something. I've raced all the way here to see if I was okay, shout Paul. And I said this really touching, and I appreciate you coming, Cecily, no matter what the reason. Blushed. But, thinking. Well, not to burst your bubble or anything, but. Eopop. Eopop it. But does it really like I'm in much danger of getting snuck up on? Flushed. Pardon me. Oh, I, need, I need more tea. It's a British. <laughs> she waves a hand vaguely about, gesturing to the scorch marks on the floor. The banks of laser cannons embedded in the walls. Hold on. Am I still recording? Yes. You have to admit that it's a pretty impressive uh, defense system she's got going on here. Something that helped a lot more proper comments of the husky and their friends had in the cornfields. I had to this bit of impressive uh, defense system you've got going on here. Did you install all of this yourself? Oh, well, you know, it's time all of my lone all of my lonesome equals lots of time for the little passion projects, Flex. Oh, I hate how she said that. Reminds me of fucking part four of JoJo. They say that at least three times. So she's a passion fueled by my desire to not get mauled by people with an axe to grind, steamed. Chefs just do not know how to behave themselves, I roll. But if they want to take it out of me with their laser turrets, then that's a them problem. <laughs> Lamau. Clap. You guess she has a point? Maybe? You always found it a little hard to follow along with what Orica says, on account of all the occult slang and acronyms she throws around. Well, I suppose you should say it was, was a them problem. Pensive. Like I said, if I was actually on my way here to turn a defense system off, I was actually on my way to turn a defense system off, innocent. She has a precious little explanation. Precious little explanation, but you're not really bothered about that. The fact that this system exists in the first place is a bigger concern of yours right now. You know, if you've been having a lot of difficulty with unwanted attention, then this is the kind of thing you should bring up with with the corporation. I know you don't like to talk about it, but you are not a member. Of, but you are a member of the official endangered hematype, and it entitles you to certain protections. If you want the time to install a voice connection here, then well, the air has a line specifically for you to make him aware of problems like these. It would surely be less taxing the use of your skills and building a makeshift fortress out of domestic waste. Hmm, thinking. So what you're saying is, thinking, thinking, I should just dial up corporate cops. Thinking, thinking. Well, sorry, but I'm just like that kind of person. Yikes. Why don't some goons from the corporation have all the fun wailing on those nook suckers? Surprise, Noodle. I mean, come on, steamed. This is basically an expropriation of my suffering, I roll. Well, okay, nobody would be wailing on anyone else, or you'd have no idea what a cop is supposed to be, but whatever. And why do I want to talk to the stupid little sister anyway? I mean, let's be real, the guy's a total weenie, I roll. If I can ask the dimple dweeb for a favor just to make him look good, yikes. He spent the whole time prattling on about social responsibility and how he's going to fix everything by recycling gaper paper or whatever, steamed. Turning on and on, and looking mournfully out the window, all forlorn and shit, like a single stay at the aquarium, pensive shrimp. <laughs> Pensive what? <laughs> I just couldn't talk to someone knowing the amount of self pitying was going on down the other end. Seriously, cry laugh. Ouch. Kind of wonder how his mates for handles him sometimes. Surprised noodle. Well, I guess I'm not one to talk to how Ron used to be. <laughs> Lol. A decade later, I still can't believe the hunk in my red corner. It's not the same guy. Swoon. Flushed. Oh yeah, this part got changed because. Uh, she kind of went about Hamifi instead of Necron, which was a bit weird considering the age gap. Yeah. But, you know, that's. They've changed that now. 
Did I tell you one's got vigilante? This sounds like a woefully ill-advised topic to bring up with the chief regulator, in my professional opinion. Oh, relax, stressily, I roll. Do you think I'd let Ronnie loose on the world if he wasn't sure he was doing the right thing? I'm sure if you desire an answer for that question. Look, all I'm saying is he was what he sees as criminal club, which wow, so do you. And he takes care of it with some mechanical help from yours truly, esteemed. Wait, if you have an metal hand, you know who to tap on your shoulder. Eyes. He fights like he kisses, and he kisses good, flushed. Oh, I bet he does, son. <laughs> Come on. You know, you don't need the light, boys. I say to myself. Ugh. It's probably a romance. It's not one you like getting into, though. Fridge not with some of them quite so, quite so well. So Orica. Topic of romance. This isn't one you like getting into, though. And especially not with someone quite so... Wait. Oh! Oh, yeah. Wait. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh! I remember this. I actually... I act On the Discord, I, I pointed this out. I, I pointed this out on the Discord. Yeah, there's... Um... Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, look-see. It's look, same line twice. It's an error, and I found that out. That's not the first error I found out. I mean, like, the, one of the most recent updates, they spelt one of the um, denizens' names wrong continuously, which is something I knew from the start, because they do, they do it in a later volume. Did, I think. And I pointed that out as well. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm autistic. I get annoyed by these things. The gaze wanders a bit, trying to avoid looking at her helmet screen for too long. You sail on a smoldering crater a, lot, a short distance away, where an electronic visor met its untimely end. All at once, the reality of the situation hits you. That visor is your trusty partner for sweeps, the only piece of tech you actually knew how to use. You haven't simply lost a hand at all. That head screen was more to you than just an accessory. It was... No, you can't say it. Now it's gone forever, tragically exploded. You're having a hard time even understanding its absence. Its absence. You're definitely in the denial stage right now. The pain is too much to bear. Speaking of pain, your think pan still hurts like crazy from when you slammed that into that rock a while back, pardon me. You put a hand to your temple and wince. Seeing this, Oracle looks a bit concerned. <coughs> pardon me. Everything alright there, sis? Surprised Noel. Did something happen to you? Cold sweat. Alright, yeah, I guess it is just unleash a barrage of ladies artillery at you, Lamau. Yikes. Well, that's all liquor under the bridge, I suppose. I'm absolutely not worth dwelling on for any length of time, innocent. And speaking of not dwelling, we should totally head back to my hive. It's not really safe all the way out here, pensive. Splitting pain you make makes it hard to talk, so you're absolutely nodding along with a lot of what Orica says. Only figuratively, mind you. Actually nodding would likely just be as painful. Be just as painful. Orica begins to head deeper into the cave, indicating you should come along with her. Pull her inside. So you begin to trudge your way through the cavern in the direction of Orica's hive. The cave system inside the cliff essentially consists of one long winding tunnel, with several smaller tribute Tribu tributaries branching off either side. It's pretty easy to navigate even without Oscar's, or Oscar, Orica's help. <laughs> you try to keep chatting to a minimum on account of your injuries, but something catches your eye after a few moments of walking that you can't help but remark on. Orica, what is that thing over there? You point towards a little alcove tucked into one of the walls of the cave. I think it's this that they're talking about, by the way. It's not the alcove itself you're interested in, but rather what's inside it. It looks vaguely mechanical. I can't see where you're pointing, looking a bit startled. You think she does at any rate. It's hard to tell when she's think she's thinking with this screen in the way of her face. Oh, that little thing? Surprise noodle. It's nothing important, innocent. Little thing for convenient reference is about eight feet tall. Oh, <laughs> whatever it is, it's constructed out of a whole lot of scrap, sort of bits of junk, and who knows what else. It's a bit freakish to look at, and yet it somehow feels familiar. Oh no. Oh hell no! Wait a moment, Horika. You know, since you mean to tell me you've been building one of your little machines again, do you? Cold sweat. I, uh... You got to see Orca's face, but you get the speaking suspicion he's avoiding your gaze behind that screen. Can we, like, not talk about this, maybe? I sent an NDA, remember, and besides, the topic is kind of, you know, yikes. Oh my god, Orca. What in the all mother's name does non-destructive agreement have to do with this? Okay, this is definitely a right this writer thing. There's a lot of times I think they should be using commas. Or maybe just seriously talking without pausing. I don't know. Other than the fact that this is the reason you, you absolutely positively cannot be building another one of those these contraptions, why do you think they made you sign the document in the first place? Because it looked nice mounted in a gilt frame on your wall. 
I mean, I mean that was that was very nice frame that you got put in glass nuggets. Thanks for that, by the way. Kiss. You're so very welcome. Anyway, that agreement was drafted because it was the only way to get everyone to keep quiet about the catastrophe that happened last year. Last time you built all of these, these mechs. It's private noodle. Mechanized body augmentation suits is what I meant to say. The pithy hype of slang is ridiculous and feels awful coming out of my shout cave. Okay, whatever. The name's not important. Cecily. My darling, pray. My angel, innocent. My favorite criminal damages lawyer. Everyone else a catastrophe. I say upon spontaneous infrastructural rearrangement. <laughs> oh god. Orca's great. I love Orca. Slash P. So really, who even knows what happened at the end of the night, thinking? You're impossible. Or doesn't respond to that other than to flash you another strange symbol through a helmet screen. <laughs> Skips on ahead of you a little while, a little ways as the two of you round another bend in the long passageway. You're a decent way inside the cliff by now. So the cave opens up into a wide, high-walled cavern. So it's hard to make out the scene in the dim light. By far the most notable thing about this cave, though, is the three-story old motherfucking mansion that's sitting right in the middle of it. Members of the endangered cast have more already access to corporate welfare than most. Whereas to say, a burgundy would be expected to take care of himself past the age of six sweeps or so. Orca, Orca and trolls of her hematype usually get get looked after well into adulthood. <laughs> For reference, I'm pretty sure six sweeps is like 13 or 14 years old. I think 13. I think a, ca a character later is like 30, as um, six sweeps. Ostensibly, it's all about preserving the rare troll subspecies, but most people see it as a sycophant sycophantic handout to a historically powerful group who have since fallen from grace. You don't suppose you can really blame them either. Or I can talk about not being really all that different from anyone else, but there's only so many small palaces you can that can be built in secret caves before that starts to ring a little hollow. You follow Orkin to the front steps, though the main in through the main entrance and into a primary living quarters. <laughs> Uh, wow, that's almost as messy. That's almost as messy as my room. <laughs> Let's have a look. There's nothing that interesting in here. There's an axe for fucking battle axe guitar. <sighs> oh. The hive has changed a lot since the last time we were here. Back when it had just been built. Well, that's not quite true. The hive itself isn't all that different. The mess is, though. Something compared to the landfill outside the cave, but you can hardly step anywhere in here for the fear of treading on something. Or worse, in something. That's an important if yoki distinction. Orca, I apologize if this comes across as somewhat of a criticism, but what is this plethora of pretty spelling garbage doing in your leisure cube? You usually stuff your various project your various engineering projects, but this is beyond absurd. I have exceptionally good vision, and even I'm having trouble seeing the floor. That's an exaggeration, which is unlike you. Hero isn't that bad. Maybe it's the blood in your eyes that's talking. Seeing it all it's pretty hard right now. Orca doesn't seem phased by your fussing, though. Hell no, sissy sweetheart. If you think this is bad, then you should see some of the other blocks in this place, I roll. <laughs> Get the feeling that you most certainly should not see any of the blocks in this hive. If nothing else, we can make some poor background artist deck artist to do <laughs> today's extra work. I was sure how long it got. I forgot it got like this. Well, honestly, I have no idea. I'm you just start doing a bit of tinkering that the available sources from nearby waste disposal zone. Before you know it, you're having this quarantine whole wings of hive because of the smell. Yikes. You know, you, you clap, no, clap, how, clap, it, clap, is, clap. Oh, that's weird to say out loud. You so utterly clap, don't clap, no, clap, how, clap, it, it clap, is. <laughs> okay, it didn't say that, but that was funny. Orica. Look, I'll be honest. My think man is killing me. Your hive is a total disaster. I'm rapidly losing my grip on the very reason why I came to see you in the first place. I thought you were in danger. I thought... I'm not especially sure what I was thinking, actually. I just knew that something was up. What is happening to the corporation right now, and none of it good? He explains to Orica about the whole vivify burglary, mer burglary, blood burglary situation. He wants some detail. So much so that it would be very boring if we all had to sit through it. Orica also seems pretty in uninterested in the whole story, actually. A bit distracted. Maybe living in a cave for so long has made it pretty detached from the world outside. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is a bit. My nose is feeling a bit blocked. <laughs> Who am I kidding? My nose is always fucking blocked. <laughs> you have her explanation. Wrap up your explanation, feeling a bit irritated. Wig! Okay, so I know this is all very important to you, but I think maybe there's something else you'd be worried about right now, pensive. 
just to your pen, which you're mass massaging furiously with both hands. You look really hurt, and the virus I gave you is missing, Pensive. You didn't get rid of it, did you? Surprise Noodle. No, Orca. I didn't get rid of it. It exploded in a fireball. Shut up, Paul! Uh oh, here we go. Would you like to know why it exploded in a fireball, Orica? I'm sure you would. It's because of the one of your crazy mechanical devices. The same things which you were supposed to never build again for the good of everyone's safety, including yours. You're okay, you're shouting now. You hate how it feels, but you love it at the same time. But it's boiling and suddenly you're almost alive the most alive you've been all day. All week. All sweep. I just don't understand any of it, Orica. I don't understand how you're just okay with this. Okay with the situation. Okay with what happened to you. Okay with what you did. Okay with anything. I just really would have died, Orica. Or what's worse, been injured past the point of medical aid. I was beside myself and worried about you. I thought you might have been killed. And it all turned out to be a complete waste of my time. In fact, it turned out to be even worse than that. My time has not been so much wasted. It's been fucked over completely. So how am I supposed to even complete my, my objective? Now my visor is... The visor is... Whew. Next word, stick, stick in your chew. An old wound flares in pain. Gone. Oh, mother of fuck. <sighs> Stop haphazardly down into your chair, dizzy, deflated, and nauseous. Your think pad feels like it's going to split in two. Orca's looking at you in shock, her helmet screen blank and featureless. Neither of you move for a while. Cecily. And then very slowly, she brings her arms up. Takes the helmet off. I'm... Not okay with it. Not with what I did, not with what happened to me, not with what happened to you. Like, obviously I'm not okay with any of those things. And at some level I know I'm not, no matter how hard, I, how hard I try, I'm not going to be okay with it. But at the same time, I just kind of have to be okay with it, if that makes sense. Like, at some level I just need to be okay with it, no matter what I actually think. Just so that I can be okay with myself. And keep on living. She sighs long and deep. Something's going to be forgiven, no matter how hard, much you apologize. No matter how much you want to forgive someone else, even though you know it's the right thing to do. Maybe it's just stupid to keep on hoping that I could build something that will make up for what happened. And even more dangerous than that is stupid, I guess. But, why to me, that's the kind of people we are, I think. We can't stop trying, because otherwise we'd be going, we'd be okay with, we'd be being okay with it. But the wrong kind of okay. I'm sorry, Cecily. Sorry that you got tied up in it. All the going, all the sleep's going right now. Pensive. She, look, she lowers her eyes to you, not meeting your gaze. You feel terrible, and not just because you're very severely battered and bruised. For one thing, losing your temper like that was simply unacceptable. You're supposed to do better. So some of those words she said I could have used a few days ago. I was really not in a good fucking place a few days ago. Oh. But worst of all is how Orca is apologizing for something which, in the end, you're just as guilty of. Putting yourself in harm's way is some, des some desperate attempt at atonement. Ugh, it's so familiar. It's the point where you've done what you've done to others, and they've done the point where what you've done to others and what they've done to you seems to congeal into one big meaty lump of anger and sadness. On that, you, one that try as you might, you'll never know what to do with. So it just stays. For time, I just let this sort of fester. Literally, I mean, a lot of what you're looking at right now happened because I got hurt and just didn't care to attend things until I was too late. Pardon me. But part of being okay with things is learning how to be okay. I think so. That's what I've decided to do. She nods to herself, perking up a little. I'm teaching myself first aid, Flex. It's not much at the moment, but hopefully one day I'll be able to do something useful with it, Steamed. <laughs> and bodies aren't really all that much different from machines, so I'm basically halfway there already, lol. Nice. <laughs> so here's an idea, Glenn Snuggets. How about I go get my thing, I'll patch you up, and I'll see about replacing your vice while I'm at it, Steamed. <laughs> that's how good says, surprised you all. She doesn't say anything about trying to make it up to you, but you both know that's what she's doing. And similarly, when you incline your head in approval, it's a way of saying sorry for the outburst. You made this strange little agreement of apology, a bargain of a tome which dropped between two unlikely friends. You... you think that's what you are. You're never really sure about these things. Oh. Orca flashes you a wink and hurries off to get her things. Once she's gone, you take a moment to try and collect your thoughts. You've got plenty of them, that's for sure. Okay, part of me makes me want to put Orica on my kin list now. My kin list is fucking massive, and there's already like two Snowbound Blood characters in it. No, technically three. One of them people aren't going to be really happy with when they find out who that other character is, but 
Okay, it's not really a kin list, but you know, I could I'll have to explain it. They still aren't me happy though. You just sit and stew for a while, mulling everything over. But eventually, by force of habit, you investigate your investigative instincts start to get the better of you. Something is up, and you don't know what it is. So you do what you always do when something goes up. Root around in a pile of trash until something presents itself. Oh. It's only in my nose. Ugh. That hurt. You get up slowly and carefully begin poking around the room. There's, okay, there's a lot of stuff in here. So much of it, so much that it all starts to blend together into one big mass of visual noise. There are some things that stand out amongst it all. In front of our desk, you see the remains of some old electronic device you probably gutted for parts in order to build one of the contraptions. Next to that is Oracle's computer, which is still turned on. Something about which seems off, but you can't quite tell why. Quite tell Yeah. It looks like there's something on the screen from here I can't tell. I think maybe words, or it's just, I don't know. Let me... Okay, I've got no fucking clue. It's not that there's anything wrong with the device itself, you don't think. It's like the simple act of looking at it, it makes you feel a bit strange. <laughs> if you had to describe it, then you'd say that it reminds you of what it's like when you're about to gather an insight increment. Like you're looking at something investigatively important. Like a pretty weird thought, you think to yourself. You mean, sure, it came in handy, but it's not like the investigat investigation progress meter has ever really meant anything, right? Yes, yeah, so there's something about not being able to rely on it that makes you feel a bit sad. You might even say depressed. That's one of the stage stages Mashiri told you about once, sleeps ago. In any case, since you don't have your visor, you'll just have to go to make do without the meter from now on. No point in dwelling on it. You probably feel weird and sad because you're concussed or something. Do so for this feeling about the computer. Probably all in your head. But the long, longer you're in the room with it, the more certain you're, you are, you are, you are, the more certain you are you have to look at it. The screen is calling to you. Well, there is an investigation going on, and you're the chief regulator. You're quite sure there's no significant ethical boundary being crossed here. And as you know, there's nowhere a chief regulator fears to tread. The idea that something could be impairing your judgement in this matter is absurd. Or, well, maybe it's not absurd, but what the hell. You're going with the feeling. You got a closer look. On the screen is a chat log of some kind. Looks like Oracle was talking to someone recently. You wonder who? The log begins half a sweep ago, so you start reading it from there. Obnoxious Antidote began discoursing with Aeneas Alloyd. Hello there. Oh, um, hi! What do they call him? Oh, poor beast. How are you? I'm, I'm okay, I guess. Just working on a personal project at the moment, Flex. I'm glad to hear it. Personal projects are wonderful, aren't they? It's something like dedicating your time to something you really believe in, and then seeing the effects of your handiwork. Yeah, I suppose that's true, thinking. Um, thinking, thinking. Not a bit rude away, but do I know you from somewhere? Surprise Noodle. Wait, is that Surprise Noodle? Yeah, the one shout ball. Ah, of course. You're right to be suspicious. And just about anyone sliding into your DMs couldn't, I, DMs, couldn't I? Let's just say I'm an admirer of yours. I recognize you in the anti-corporate antiquarian blog server. Oh, I love any new people from the A ACAB. Hi there, shout ball. Oh. Ha, ACAP, I see what you did there! But an admirer, flushed. I don't know what I, could have, what I could have done to deserve one of those, flushed, flushed. Oh, come now. That's putting yourself down terribly. You seem to be rather well known in certain circles, eh? In fact, I just go as far as to say, you should be famous. Nothing much out of the ordinary here, you don't think, although, hmm, no, it's probably nothing. Skip ahead a few weeks, keeping an eye out for anything suspicious. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, because I was a dumbass the first time I read this, I didn't know who this was. But I know who it is now. I th it really was fucking obvious by that, by that line alone. So, thinking, thinking. What were you talking about in the server earlier? Thinking. That's pretty nuts, Lamau, Glance Nuggets. Do you really think so? I thought it was perfectly reasonable. I'm sure we all agree that corporate is pretty bad news away, but... It's cold sweat. That's some really serious stuff to just come out and say, cold sweat. If anyone did that, lots of innocent people would get hurt. Sad. And your point is... I don't thought you of all people would understand where I'm coming from, AA. And besides, you agree with me, right? That there's something wrong with our world. 
something festering underneath its, underneath its surface. There's nothing wrong with wanting to cleanse what's been infected. Maybe you should try it sometime. Wait, what? This this doesn't look harmless at all. You skip ahead some more. A horrible feeling setting in your acid tubes. Reach a point where Oracle drops her quirk entirely. That definitely can't be good. We need to talk. To what do I owe the pleasure? Oh, quit it with the fake pol polite shtick away. I know it's all a fat lie. Just like you type in color of your quirk and everything else about you. I should have realized who you were the moment I saw your handle. I haven't the foggiest idea what you mean. Have I done something wrong? I think you know that I'm far from the only one of us who's made any mis who's made mistakes. Listen, you bastard. We've all done some crazy shit in the past, but the stone you just tried to pull with TR was so fucked up. That's what you CC and RC and GW, and those are just the ones we know about. You need to leave and never come near any of us again. <laughs> oh, Orica. This kind of behavior is really unbecoming of someone from your cast. Okay, f how the fuck do you know my name? I know lots of things about you, Orica. Like I said, you should be famous. And if I were you, I'd spend a lot less time looking out for people who are beneath you, and more time worrying about yourself. There are people who want to do very, very nasty things to you, Orica. Lowbloods would love to finish what they started. I know what you must think of them. I understand. They're disgusting, aren't they? That's ironic, considering your fucking blood color. I don't- I- I'm not above anyone! They're not disgusting! And stop calling them Lowbloods! You know this cast bullshit doesn't mean anything anymore! Doesn't it? How would you if you believe that? I know they certainly don't. Is my voice for this this character the same? I don't remember. I always forget them, I'm sorry. I'll go back and see. Because I really want to get this character's voice right. Because he's one of my favourite characters. For story reasons. He sucks, but he's, he's a good written... Well, is he good? I don't know. Fuck him, basically. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Soon you'll be able to put that high and mighty attitude to the test. You feel a little different when your visitor arrives. My visitor? You sent someone here? I wouldn't call it that. I might let it slip, might let it slip that I knew where you were. I do that very, very keen to come and see you. Any minute now, you should get his proximity alert from one of your drones. Fuck, fuck, fuck! There we go. Oh wait, what did you do? It's alright, nothing to worry about. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm sure your defense system is more than capable of handling them. You saw it after all, and very expertly too. Was Harmon letting it do its job? You won't, have any, you won't have to worry about it when you're scraping their ashes off the floor. I... I have to go. Don't ever contact me again, you monster. Blocked. Last message was sent within the last hour. This happened just before you arrived. All at once, in the sense of a very concussed think pan, several ideas all come together, lock, all come together and lock into place. You know this person, or rather you know their voice, and now you know that they're more than trying to mess with you. Someone out there wants you very dead, very badly. There's nothing new about that, of course. People want you dead all the time, and you're always happy to disappoint them. But nobody's ever go gone about it like this before. This is new. Your internal monologue is interrupted by the sound of Orica returning. You move swiftly away from the computer and sit back down in a chair. Let's ruminate more about this later. Okay, so I have good news and better news, that's like it's... Let's see which you want to hear first, but honestly, the concussion is probably hell impairing your judgement right now. Pensive fist. <laughs> the good news is I found my medical supplies and Dr. Roust is now in the building, Winklick. She carries a small box over to where you are and opens it. You can't see what's inside, but she takes out something out of the box and fiddles with it for a moment. You reach it to your think pen carefully. Carefully. Oh, that came out weird. Because I'm tired! The tongue is stuck out. Her tongue is stuck out, brow forward in concentration. You feel a faint bit of pressure, and then she pulls back to admire her handiwork. Orica. Hmm? Sprite Noodle? Is that a band-aid you just put on me? Or a bandage, if I call it by the correct name. She beams at you. <laughs> and I bet it feels much better now, huh? Kiss. You. Ugh, you don't have the blood push to tell her. Not after everything else that's happened tonight. Thank you, Orica. You're going to need to see Mashiri in a stiff drink after this. And we do. Maybe both at once. Especially if this is any indication as to what the better news is going to be like. You get some nasty feeling it's going to be something that, to do with Orica's other, more mechanical area of expertise. Oh boy. Orica goes back to fetch something and then returns with it cupped in both hands. Okay, so for this one I'm going to need your help, Glance Nuggets. She holds her hands out towards you and then shows what she's carrying. 
Cover between the palms is... you're not sure what it is. At least not at first. It's made of some pure white metal and appears to have legs? You look at it hard for a moment, your brain slowly recognizing the shape more and more. The wings, the beak, the feathers that almost look like scales. It's... a hummingbird moth? That's the one! Nice. You haven't seen one of these since your losers died. She's pretty cool, right? Steam. All I had to do was modify one of the drones I had roaming out in the trash dunes, Flex. I only scout for parts I out there, so I don't have to spend so much time digging through mountains of useless garbage to find anything good, I roll. And you also let me know if anything anyone's nearby, just in case, well, you know, pensive. Anyway, I just tinkered with this one a bit, and now she's yours, kiss. You okay, Cicely? All sweat. Yes, I'm... It's just a smell in here. It makes my glance like it's perspired, that is all. I'm fine. She's beautiful. I know, right? Steam, steam, steam. She dipped a humming buff drone into your waiting hands, looking very pleased with herself. You stare down at it for a while in silence. She, she seems to remember something. Oh right, I should probably tell you how to turn it on, Lamel. Yikes. I know technology is something you have a bit a bit of a hard time with, Sessy, so I made it real simple just for you, innocent. I appreciate it so very much. Lamel, <laughs> this is scathing Cecily wit I know and love, wink click. Why should be just working already, Flex? Oh, you said activate here? All you gotta do is press the part here and say something, Glad Nuggets. And she'll imprint on your voice, and that's all there is to, to it. Nice. I see. And that does sound very simple. What to say? What to say? You also say that you're a power, and you don't have things without you say things without due consideration. Your every word is calculated, every utterance straight and to the point. Like you're very, like you're very straight, very pointy bladed. <laughs> but luckily, you're not straight. If you're going to activate this thing, it's going to have to be some, something good. You close your eyes and cast your mind back over the events of the night. And then, even further, weeks, blinks, sweeps, until the memory of a lifetime go catches your attention. You're sitting in a temp office, and one of, many of your, one of many you visited in those days. Some faceless person was trying to walk you through the pain with nothing but a handful of important words. You choose one, like you're picking a card for a magic trick. And you walk back through the long sweeps with it, feeling its weight grow with, with the time. You know what to say. It's words that you've never quite got the hang of. It's not in your nature, most likely, but it'll do for now. Acceptance. Oh, That was a good route. Except, hmm. We have a bit more insight into what our little green-blooded caller is doing. It get, trust me, he is a nasty fuck. We will learn what he does more later on. But yeah, Arca is great. I love Arca. And this is not the last we've seen of Orca, or a bunch of more. We're going to see a bunch of characters again. <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of Volume 4 of Stagecraft and Survival. And coming... You know, if I if I get up tomorrow morning when the kid's still on here, I could probably do it. Next we have Volume 5 of Blood and Comfort. Uh, this is going to be a... That's a very, this will be a very interesting volume. That's for sure. And... Uh, yeah, only three left after all these ones. One, two, three, four, five. That's how many weeks. Yeah, one, two. Like how many weeks it could be till I finish this, but oh well. Yeah. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you like the video, punch the like button in the face. <laughs> no, never mind. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs> um, yeah, if you did watch. Um, like and subscribe if you like Snowbound Blood of Astera. Go read Snowbound Blood of Astera. And uh, keep watching mine if you watch it. But yeah, thank you and goodbye.